now external oblique just barely visible the external oblique see that just barely visible right on the margin here right and you want to leave a little bit of space between the margin of the rectus abdominis the abs right and the margin of the external oblique So now I need also to consider the effect of the light on this form. Remember when I showed you the um, <clears throat> um, the early stage when I was studying this uh, this drawing here, the light coming from here means that this area here is going to be lighter, right, medium, and dark, right. I mean, relatively dark, right, but of the three. I have a curved surface, so think what it would do, the light would do on, on a sphere, on a curved circle, on a curved uh, surface. Like the light comes from here, that's the lightest area, and then, then gradually we go darker as you move down away and around, away from the light source, right? Linea alba, right in the middle. And likewise, I want to think that each one of these segments is not flat, but it has a curve itself, right? So it's going to be relatively um, lighter here and then medium and dark, right? Uh, relatively to the small curve, right? Make sure when you use a stamp that it's it's clean or it's the color that you are using. Because if you use it for graphite and you put it here, it's gonna get all black, right? Uh, clean it. I like to shave it with a knife, right? But you can also get sandpaper, but uh, sandpaper will leave a fuzzy, fuzzy surface. A knife will, sh a sharp knife will kind of shave off the 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 dirty portion of the. Um, of the stump, and um, it's it. You can model it. It's gonna you're gonna make it cleaner. Now here I have the uh, line that you can tend to be irregular, right? The line in here where the um, external oblique stops, right? It's not going to be straight line, it's going to be regular. You're going to say, why, you know, what does it matter? I'm not going to see it anyway, right? You're right, but... Um, it helps you. It helps you in understanding the body better in more holistic way, right? And it helps you to, to learn to deal with the complexity of the human body, right? Also, to um, know what to include, what to exclude, so you draw it, you get to understand it in, uh, you depict it in detail, and that increases your knowledge of the human body overall. Um, and then uh, later you have uh, more choices, right? You can say, okay, I know it's gonna be all these nice little beautiful lines here, all the, the fascicles kind of, you know, connecting like this, beautiful connection between the muscle and the tendinous, fascia here but but now I don't need it so I, I, I just eliminate it right 
because most of the time you're not going to see those lines, but sometimes you have a very, very thin model with very, very little body fat. You're going to see here all these little lines, right? Or the pectoralis, for example, these little lines that are the specific little segment of the muscle that pop up, that pop up. And that's, and that's what it is. But the skin can be very thin, right? And especially when you don't have a lot of body fat. Uh, those, if you have a, a model with body fat and fit, uh, not necessarily big muscle, but, but, but tonic fit exercise muscle, these details are going to become available. You're going to see them. Of course, in here you're gonna also see the, the the lines of the ribs. I'm gonna wait to block in the ribs uh, to see if that in fact is necessary. It might it might become a little bit too um, too much, right? But we'll, we'll we'll wait to make that decision, right? Okay, and I block in the arms. So from under from under the. Um, Pectoralis here, this is the pectoralis, right? The pectoralis goes over the bicep. This is the bicep, right? And um, the bicep divided in two heads, right? Long head and short head. Right? Um, it goes over the bicep here and under the deltoid which is here the delta wraps around it goes to the side of the arm so it's going to be visible here right only the top here and then disappears behind the uh, volume of the bicep this is the corocobrachialis right corocobrachialis gets down halfway down the length of the bicep but it disappears under the the, the uh, short head of the bicep in here and um, soon after here we're gonna have the brachialis appearing which is in the second half right the distal half of the humerus and then the bicep here right the fusiform bicep right the two heads that join and merge and become one belly just one belly here right um, this is the tricep right the long head this is the medial head of the tricep and there's a division here the septum the medial head is kind of hiding not very visible usually because it's mostly hidden under the long head and the, and the lateral head. But here, from the inside, you see it. You can see it, right? See if we can... All of this, I want to, to have darker, so I, I, not, I don't want much uh, contrast, meaning highlight and shadow, etc., uh, because it's in the shadow. But here, I want to model it a little bit rounder because uh, it catches light, so I need to have more contrast, meaning I go from lighter area to to gradually darker area. Not in here, because I can imagine how this muscle here, the long head of the tricep, in this pose can be hidden uh, behind the body and don't doesn't catch much light. Right? This portion of the delta might catch light because it's uh, directed toward the, the light, but then here it gets darker. Right? But, so don't think in terms of muscle think in terms of volumes what would the volume um what would the light on a volume uh like a cylinder or a or a sphere right um how would it behave how the light would it behave on a sphere or a or a cylinder because it's easier right it's easier to do that
subscapillaris. I, I usually don't see the subscapillaris. This is the uh, um, armpit, the axilla. It's going to be all dark, right? Subscapillaris in here, and then the latissimus, and then the teres, major. Pectoralis. Right. 